Hey guys, Zach here and welcome to Goddess. Now, the Goddess game is still being developed and it has actually changed significantly since the last time I covered it. And as you can see, this is the very start of the game and uh, let's see what the game is at this state. Now, what I want to show you guys is uh, basically the game now has a predetermined goals as you go along. So, for example, leading your first two people to their first settlement and then getting the first uh, the land expansion and various other goals throughout the game. And this sort of guides you through it step by step. So I want to show you guys these steps, the, the whole game. Well, at least I'm going to play for maybe an hour, hour and a half and see how far I get. And show you guys basically what the game is progressing towards in as little time as possible. So if you don't own the game or you don't want to watch like a full straight raw let's play, you can watch this one. I'm going to be cutting between all the boring bits and all the progression bits. And so with that being said, let's get this started. As you can see, you start with the first two people and let's try get through this as quickly as possible. We get our first power, which is sculpt the land. And it does give you a little bit of a tutorial. So we can do this pretty quickly. Uh, it starts out very, very simple. So we get this tutorial on how to sculpt land and it brings you back to the world. Uh, let's fill this out. Uh, sculpting, by the way, they have done a lot of work on sculpting. You might recall it used to be much slower than this. Now you can see it goes very, very quickly. And also um, sculpting sand, so these things, doesn't actually take any god power. So uh, Messing around with sand and creating more land will actually uh, be much, much easier and much, much faster. You can see this, basically you can just uh, sculpt right through it. And by the way, in this current version of Goddess, there is a developer's commentary. So as you play the, the current version of the game, you can hear Peter Molyneux uh, explain the concepts and the, the, the workings behind the mechanics. I, I have a feeling they did that because people were uh, kind of worried about the decisions they were making and they do actually elaborate how um, their, their decisions were made which makes things a bit clearer. So as you can see here we get our first two followers and they now see me as their god and uh, we gotta bring them to a safe land for them to settle. So uh, let's see how this works. Mm -hmm. They're looking for the promised lands but I'm guessing they can't climb this. So we can now do this layering thing. Much, it's much easier to control the, the these layers of uh, terrain again. So they're off again. Let's keep up with them. And I can't control it yet. There we go. Right click and hold and drag. Now, I have played a little bit of this before this just to make sure everything was working. Now they're looking for land. This is too small. And basically they're just gonna you can zoom out and see there's this sort of border. Uh, there's some option settings here. On the quality settings, I can set it to large display and done. And this actually changes how the screen works. And I actually prefer this because you don't get so much of that border thing going on. And you can still zoom in. Oh, they're still stuck here. So let's extend that. Now, the last time I did cover this game, I did... Uh, was that I, I played until the game basically glitched out <laughs> and died on me. So if you want to see that happening, you can go to my previous goddess video. And okay, this place is too cramped. And they're basically, we're just leading them along this path. So I'm going to skip ahead here because you don't need to see all of this until they reach the promised land. All right, here we go. So this is the promised land. So this whole thing kind of works like a tutorial at this point. Uh, so this is the promised land. They seem pretty happy about uh, this this area. So let's go ahead and ooh, there's the first beacon that will expand our our range, I guess. Night is falling. Followers need shelter. Oh, there's a day night cycle now. Okay, so we can get rid of these rocks. Click and hold to remove them, and they can now build houses. So, let's keep going. Uh, we can't currently do anything else. Let them build the first house here. There we go. So, basically the, the concept of how things is supposed to be going on is like before, uh, we would have uh, a lot of waiting around. Uh, okay, so the people go into the hut and they need to breed and expand. So, we gotta clear more space. There we go. 
uh, and we can send a worker out to go and build another house. So this is working similarly to before, though the whole game does seem to be a lot more refined than it was. Still got a ways to go, but it's, it's looking better, more like a game. Now the problem before was that people were waiting around, like you, you can see all of these tasks take uh, time to, to complete. And um, there was a lot of waiting around sort of thing. And let's, can we expand this? No? Okay, no. Uh, so, uh, the waiting around was kind of boring, <laughs> we could say. Uh, so, they've added in more features so that when one thing is sort of loading, there should be other things to do. Uh, but we'll see if that really holds up uh, at this current state of the game. So, let's see, we gotta create three more plots for the followers to build on. So, I think I can skip ahead here. The sand is still free to sculpt. So let's go ahead and do that. Send those guys out, and I'm gonna get three more abodes, and we'll skip ahead to that. Okay, there we go. We've now increased our population to 10, and basically when you reach population milestones, you get new rewards. So, that's kinda cool. It's still the card system. I'm still not a big fan of the cards, but they seem to be sticking with it. Uh, but it looks like we've unlocked New Age Shelters, which is, uh, uh, seems to be the big, uh, similar capacity, but there's belief per hour, belief capacity. Okay, so that, that, that's cool and all. Uh, so stickers hide in chests, you must find one. So these things here, uh, uh, that one's currently out of my range. Uh, there we go. So they're still using cards and stickers, which still feels a little, um... A, a little kiddish, really, um, especially considering this game is sort of like a, a spiritual su successor to Populous. But let's have a look. Um, we've got this. So this is the timeline, right? So this is all of the technologies that will be unlocked. And it's not just technologies. It's sort of uh, abilities like God powers and also sort of um, uh, like mannerisms. Like here you can see living society. It's a... Uh, uh, it will affect your followers in certain ways. So we've got New Age Shelters and to un we can unlock the cards c by reaching population uh, milestones. But to actually use the ability that is listed here, we got to use these stickers. So the idea is these stickers are a limited resource. You'll find a lot early on, but you got to use these stickers to unlock cards. Uh, so we've unlocked new abodes, which means that you know, new age shelters, which means the houses they're gonna build from now on are gonna be different kinds of houses. So let's send three workers out to go ahead and build more, and I gotta reach a population of 16. So I'm pretty sure I can uh, get that pretty quickly, uh, but we can skip ahead as they build. You see these new abodes take 40 plus 45 seconds to build, so even going from these small little tents to these, it's it's reaching almost a minute to build these houses. A few more steps and it's going to take a few minutes, maybe even 10, 15 minutes for the larger buildings or even longer than that. So we'll skip ahead until we reach a population of 16 and you'll see all the new houses here. Okay, there we go. We've reached 16 people. That didn't take very long. We'll send a couple more guys out to build houses while we look at this new card. Restore Ruin. So I guess that's what this thing is. So we can now Shrine Builders 2, Temple Builders 2, uh, so we can now restore this. Repair the Beacon of Expansion. Do we not need to use any... Okay, we don't need to use any stickers on that. So we gotta do this. The beacon can be built. Click a nearby abode with an available builder. So there's two there. So they're gonna go ahead and build this beacon, which I'm pretty sure is gonna expand my circle of influence further into the land. Now let's see how long this is actually going to take to build. About the same time as these houses. 45 seconds. With two builders it should half in time? No? Or maybe that was already counting with two builders. So it's two builders for 45 seconds. Alright, so let's skip ahead while uh, 30 seconds to see that happen. Okay, here we go. Another second, and there. We've now rebuilt this shrine. Click this card to activate it. Beacon of Expansion. And there we go. Our sphere has gone further out into the land, and this whole thing seems to burn down. 
which I guess it doesn't have to be there. It might be cool if it stayed as this burning sort of thing in the center, but it's made room for a few more houses, and you can see we can instantly unlock new stickers uh, and send more people out to build houses because there's a lot more space to work with. We could clear off some more of these rocks. Get a few more people around here, there we go. Uh, so, uh, when we reach this goal, I can start receiving power from belief. So, uh, I'm gonna increase my population, and I'm also gonna scour around for a few more treasure chests to get these stickers. And we'll see how the next phase of this game works. Alright, I've reached a bigger population, and I've unlocked a new card, Power of Prayer. Which means Beach Hut Belief Capacity, okay. So there we go. And I've also reached uh, Settle on Grass because I hit up to 30 people in my population. Which means I can now, I guess, build houses on grass. So let's have a look at this. I did get a few things. I gotta use this uh, sort of tool thing here. Two of them. Two stickers to unlock this card. And now I should be able to build houses on grass. And I got all this belief to collect as well, so I think I can just drag around to collect all of it. And send all these people out to build things. There we go. So you can see there's all of these plots of land which are now available to be built here, and I have this belief in the lower left corner. So I got 900, which means now sculpting sand is free, but sculpting this earth is not. So now I can access things like that, which is good. And I know there was one over here as well. There we go. Unlock those chests. Okay, good news. A boat is close enough to the Pit of Doom. So this is the Pit of Doom. We can go ahead and repair that. And you can see, here's where the time starts to come in. It takes four minutes with these two builders to build this house. So that's starting to look like quite a lot of time. Um, and oh, there's actually some more belief going around here. And a few more... Oh, if, because I've unlocked grass, we can now build up here. So three builders are going to go up there and construct that. Let's make the travel up there a bit easier for them. These fish are a bit nicer uh, uh, effect as well. So filling the bar will allow followers to be more playful. So I guess the next technology being unlocked is... There we go. Living society. So that would be nice, seeing the, the people go around. Now, a big concept of this whole thing is to have people sort of going around. You're supposed to care for the people. Um, you're supposed to care for all these followers and you're supposed to nurture them and all that stuff. But we'll see if that's actually possible. Looks like some of these grass abodes are starting to get completed though, which is nice. And I just noticed this spire, which shows a nice uh, depiction of all the different layers you're gonna see. There, there can actually be snow-capped mountains. Uh, so that, that would be interesting to see. I'm not sure how far we can go. There's some weird stuff over here. Uh, and some weird stuff over there. And there's a boat over on that side, uh, which could be interesting. But for now, we'll focus on this. We've got another 30 seconds and a couple more minutes here, so uh, let's skip ahead until this Pit of Doom is completed. Okay, here we go. The Pit of Doom is now activated. Let's click this card. Gems for followers. Okay, yes, yeah, so uh, in the mobile version of the game, so Goddess is a cross-platform game in case you didn't know. Uh, here we go. Um, gems is basically, the mobile game is free, but they make money through the selling gems, right? So here they explain the whole concept of gems, but for the PC version, which we're playing on right now, uh, we've already paid for the game, so they don't feel that it's fair to also charge us for gems. So one way we can uh, get gems to in, in the PC version is to sacrifice followers or to, as you can see through your skill, completing things from voyages or even treasure chests. Okay, so there we go. Uh, so as you can see, we can now sacrifice followers for gems, which is... Uh, I'm not exactly sure how to get them in there quite yet. I think we need the, the, the leashing power to send people to actually go into there. I don't think we have that power right now. But let's see, we do have this gems exchange. We got 20 gems here. And you can see we can buy s these sticker packs or extra bits of belief. So 20, so five gems gets you a thousand belief, which is, uh, I guess, quite a lot. And these sticker packs will come in handy, especially if you can't find those treasure chests. Now, this does feel a little mobile, yeah, as you can see, this house is taking uh, six minutes or seven minutes to build that one. That's gonna take a while. But a lot of these things can be 
rushed with uh, this these gems, you can see that. So if you actually do play the game uh, skillfully, you sh in theory, you can see that I just got three gems from that treasure chest. Uh, in theory, we should be able to rush these things along. So let's go ahead and see this. This is going to take almost eight minutes to build this hut. Let's spend two gems and finish it now. And that should speed our population increase up to 40 much, much quicker. Well, it takes 30 seconds to do that as well. Uh, any of these houses completing anytime soon? That's another three minutes. That's another minute and a half. This one just finished. Okay, there we go. Uh, there. Our population reached 40 and we've now unlocked Living Society. So let's go ahead and have a look at that. Living Society, it's going to take these speechy things, which I've gotten from Treasure Chest as well. Two of those. And we've now unlocked that. And that should mean... Uh, ah, direct control of followers is next at 50 population. So now... This is a breeder, okay. People should be walking around, milling about, uh, discussing things and stuff like that. So, the next milestone is uh, 50 people. And let's uh, go ahead and make some space for some houses and reach that target. Okay, there we go. We've now reached 52 people, just past 50. And we've now unlocked command followers. So this is where the direct control actually comes along. And it seems like it costs 100 belief to actually control uh, an individual. So let's go ahead. Uh, ah, here's a tutorial on how to do it. So this plot is too far away for followers to see. And we can click and hold and leash him to this task. And he's just going to go ahead and build this house. Build so there we go. That's pretty good. Now, we're not going to have to wait four minutes to see this. Okay, looks like you could do with some help. We can leash an abode and do that as well. Send someone else to go and help. So this can actually direct your construction a lot better. And you could actually like leash 10, 20 people over to a completely different area to develop some faraway place. So we can like... There we go. Group up a whole bunch of them to an unbuilt shrine, and looks like I missed one of them. Let's try that. Again, there we go. So we can tell four people to go ahead and build an unbuilt shrine which is much further away, which would unlock more areas of land. So we could do that quite nicely. So... Come on, we don't have... Let's see, we'll watch this, and... There we go. Now, let's try it. Heading back to our world, as you can see, it's developing... It's talking about gems again. Uh, repair the dock. Leash followers to repair the dock. Okay. So, do these have... I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, find and repair the dock. So this is the dock. Okay, so how do we send people off to to build that? we got to select... Ah, there we go. So it takes a hundred belief to select each person. So let's go ahead and grab four people. That's quite a lot of belief, but never mind. So four people are going to go ahead and go build the dock. Now, one thing I have noticed is people do actually get tired. Uh, if you click on them, you can see their energy levels here. You can boost it for free. I'm not sure if this should be free. It feels a bit cheating. Maybe it's uh, just a reward for actually paying attention. But there we go. You can see all these houses coming along quite nicely. And you can see I've been spending some gems to speed things along. And ooh, yes, we can sacrifice someone to the Pit of Doom. So let's go ahead and sacrifice this person. So it cost me 100 belief to chain this person. I can actually tell him to go into other houses. That's interesting. And I'm going to sacrifice one person to the Pit of Doom. And this is supposed to make people more unhappy with this happiness bar over on the right side. So let's see. This person here, sorry about this, but uh, we have to do a demonstration of how the Pit of Doom actually works. I've never done this before. So, I have 17 gems now, and I'm guessing it's one follower per gem. And, which could be handy. So this is gonna make people more unhappy. Now, I don't know how gruesome this is. No, she just jumps right in. Okay. And I get one gem out of that. So. 
it's trading basically happiness for gems because the people will regenerate over time anyway. Now, this dock, as you can see, is going to take another 11 minutes, even with four people building it. With three gems, we can finish that right now, which I probably should go ahead and do that. Actually, two gems now because it's dropped below 10 minutes. So two gems, finish that, and we've unlocked Voyage of Discovery. So there we go, we can now explore new worlds. Now this is a kind of, from what I understand, it's a kind of mini-game. But it allows us to, to do things while other things are going on. So for example, let's go ahead and make sure a lot of construction has actually started. Okay, so you see all these things gonna take seven minutes, nine minutes, quite a while actually. Um, I'm gonna actually spend a hundred belief to send one person over to build this thing. So one person is going to start working on that uh, restoration thing. Make sure his energy is high. And the idea is that while you're waiting for all of this to happen, because you're going to run out of gems pretty quickly if you just start spending it on all these houses. Uh, while you're waiting for all of this to happen, you're supposed to be able to go and do other things. So one of the other things is this. So let's go ahead and start a voyage. Now this is a kind of mini-game from what I understand, and it seems like it. So this is a new adventure where you can win lots of stickers, help your followers reach the temples to recover the treasure. So it's a pretty straightforward sort of thing. So start the expedition, so I guess we sail. We start with 30 people it seems, and progress one of eight. So it seems like there's eight islands we're supposed to go to. This is your mission score at the top left, it'll be added to your total score and we have to so people are going to reach the temple. Okay, so and it looks like it's up to me to bridge the, these gaps. So I'm guessing this one's going to be pretty straightforward. And it seems like they whistle while they work. Um, yes, quite. Um, so far... And there's a smiley face on this temple. Um, now, you know what I was saying about the, the cards and the stickers? Uh, yes, well, we won that mission. What I was saying about the cards and the stickers, um, this feels a lot more childish and kiddish compared to that. Um, smiley faces on temples and whistling while they work is... Uh, Maybe it's, it, it feels a bit too kiddish for me. Um, especially for this sort of what they're hoping to be a full PC experience. Um, I mean, some gamers aren't going to be too happy about that. And personally, I'm not too, too comfortable. I mean, if my friends were around, I would probably mute the game at this point because they'll, they'll be wondering, <laughs> what are you playing? Um, yes. The, the whistling while they work is a bit weird, and uh, even a bit out of place, I would say, for what is supposed to- I mean, I just- I just burnt a woman to death uh, about a minute ago. Um, this, this seems a little out of place, but let's go ahead and do a few more. So, it seems to be uh, taking a- getting progressively more difficult as we go along. So, let's try a few more of these. So, this one seems to be just a lot of layer work to do. And you get a fixed amount of belief, it seems. Uh, so let's just make sure we set this up right. That should get them there. Uh, they seem to be a bit confused, that should fix it. And seems like there's a pathfinding issue. If they get stuck, they have to walk all the way back down here. Why? Why can't they climb up there? They actually walked all the way back down to and now... What? Now they're stuck there. Well, looks like there's some pathfinding issues. Let's try restart that. If I abandon this... Uh, no, I, I, I don't want to lose all the followers set on this mission. They're just stuck there. Come on, move. Y you're gonna move now? Okay. Guess I won't get three stars on this one. <laughs> Not too concerned, really. Okay, there we go. At least it stopped the whistling for a while. So, here we go. They all get into the smiley face temple. Uh, couldn't they put a different thing? Uh, I can replay missions to get a better score. Never mind, I'll stick with two two stars. Let's see what the next one is. 
As you can see, I'm collecting stickers, gems, and stuff like that. So I currently have... Ooh, this one's a little tougher. Uh, but it's okay. Let's land. Draw that out. Draw this out. Draw that back, I think, would be a more efficient way of doing it. Draw that back a bit. And this looks like a steady step. We just have to bridge this gap. There we go. And they should make their way over there straight away. So, you get this fixed amount of belief, which looks like in the early stages is quite a lot. It's, it's, it's I think I started with like 800, 700, something like that. And the sand is free to sculpt, so no worries there. We could do pretty much anything. Uh, so, these people are going to make their way over. I'm not sure if we actually lose these people, if they actually reach this temple. Um, so, let's see, we got... I think we were at 15 or 16 people left just now. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 people. So, I'm guessing we have 10 people left after this. And here we go. Get in there. Do I get maximum score? 8,000? I think I do. Uh, there we go. Three stars, sail on. Yeah, I got 10 people left in this boat. Let's go ahead and check out one more. I should be able to do two more islands, so let's go ahead and do two more islands while while we're at it. Uh, ooh, there's a danger on this one. Um, so, champions are dangerous, help your followers avoid them. So I think this is pretty straightforward. Don't walk this way, they want us to walk this way. So, just gotta land, bridge this gap, and seal this off so they don't do anything dumb. There we go. Yes, walk around the other way. And we got, ooh, quite very little belief on this mission, actually. Uh, but no, no worries. Sand is free to sculpt. And we can block that off quite nicely. There we go. Just make sure no one's dumb enough to wander over that side. How do I, do I zoom in? Can I get rid of that bit of sand? No? Okay, never mind. So it looks like we're gonna reach the temple fine, avoid the champion. Maybe I should have let him die, but... <laughs> Uh, it's the first time we've seen something like that before. Some kind of giant guy with a metal hammer. Alright, so, uh, we... I think I've only got five people left on this boat. So let's see what happens when we actually run out of people. So let's successfully do one more stop here. Now, ooh, this one's really tricky. Uh, not as tricky as it seems though. You could walk around that way. But seems like what I should be doing is skipping through here, okay? So to stop them from going the wrong way, I should block that off quickly. Bridge that. Bridge here. Come on, bridge across. Then bridge across here. And I want to seal this stuff off to make sure they don't go the wrong way. So. Uh, you can see how these puzzles are working. It's basically sculpting puzzles. I'm not sure if they have uh, another idea of uh, making different kinds of puzzles. But really, so far, the thing I hate most about Goddess is the whistling and the smiley face. I just can't stand that smiley face. It just doesn't fit the aesthetic. This is almost a survival game of people and being sacrificed and gods. Uh. They are very, very borderline kiddish on some of these features. Now, I have zero people left on this boat. What happens if I try sail again? Um, can I land anyone? Do I have... do I still have people here? Ooh, this is actually gonna unlock an ability, is it? Follower speed. All followers in radius bonus. 100%. Placing the Shrine of Speed will increase the velocity of all followers nearby. Blight slows down followers. So this is a power I can use, I guess? Speed up 30 reinforcements. Oh, okay. So I don't have any more people on this boat. So it does cost gems to speed up the reinforcements, but I guess we can abandon it for now. So there's no more people on the boat. And reinforcements, I think it showed... Here we go. These are reinforcements coming. I'm not sure. I guess it's five people in each one. It's going to take, looks like, half an hour for people to actually reach me. So I guess for now, this is the idea. We've, we've played this for too long. It's The game is basically telling us. And it's telling us to go home and to do something else. So there we go. Well done. Uh, yes, yes. They're still telling us about gems. And 
Now we're back and you can see that a bunch of houses have been completed. And this guy... Has this been built at all? It looks like it's gonna take 40 minutes to build that. Oh, he just got there. Seven gems to finish it right now. Well, let's have a look at this. Bigger abodes. So it's capacity 5. That seems like a worthwhile thing to get. And look at all these stickers I've got. It's gonna take some of these uh, spanner ones. Looks like five of them, so let's just go ahead and use all of them. There we go. Bigger abodes unlocked. And hopefully they'll start building some of those soon. And oh, we actually do have some belief to collect. And uh, don't worry about this belief stuff. I think uh, they have made it quite clear that in future there will be more automated methods of collecting this belief. So we got still not that much to go about, but uh, I've showed you how the Voyage of Discovery works. We can resume that at any point. And the next big thing is this thing. So uh, it's going to take six gems to finish this right now. It's six gems is definitely worth my 30 minutes. So let's go ahead and finish that straight away. And Beacon of Expansion unlocked. And we have some visitors. Oh. Other people live on this land. They're called Astari. Keep an eye on them. They might be up to something. Ah, uh, yes. I have heard of the Astari. The Astari are basically sort of these mischievous people, which at the start just sort of mess with your people and distract them from finishing their work. But later on, I think this is going to be a, a warring faction, uh, which is uh, going to be quite interesting. Now... The, there's a few more milestones. It looks like we have a lot of new land to explore over here. Uh, and I'm not sure how much I should be unlocking at this point. There's the next beacon of expansion. And this land sort of goes on for quite some time, actually. Wow, there's, there's rivers, beacons of expansion. It seems like you could keep playing for a long, long time. And this is this the end of the island? I think it is, unless you expand over this way. And there's a whole new... Yeah, there, there's there's a... Oh, look at that! Astariville! Astari Temple! Population 250. Astari converted to followers, zero. We're supposed to convert them to our followers. Look at this! They have a lovely little place. What is this big thing in the middle? They got... Shrines? This is a shrine of... Sp Statue of Speed? This is a Shrine of Capacity. That's another Shrine of Speed, I think. What's this one? Shrine of Stamina. So people last longer, I guess. <laughs> um, so, okay. So there is actually an Astariville. I'm not sure calling that is... Ooh, the Ark. That's a big thing as well. So I'm guessing we're going to build a big Ark and travel to a new land. I'm, I'm currently guessing that this Ark is the end game of this version of Goddess. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, skip ahead from here and I'm going to... Uh, you can see those Astari people are laughing at me right now. Um, I'm going to skip ahead and play for a little while longer and see if we discover anything interesting within the next sort of 10-15 minutes. But I think just scrolling around the land you sort of see what the game is all about. I'm just gonna do a quick once-over to make sure I'm not missing anything important. And there's this sort of big island. There's This is, is the Astari Island, I'm guessing. Just going around the edges here. And I don't see anything specifically standing out at this point. There's some islands off the side there. Okay, so looks like the goal of the entire game right now is to go ahead and reach the Astari people, convert them to your people, and then build this arc and set sail for a new world. And I'm guessing that's where the game ends at this point. So yeah, let's skip ahead and see what we can find. Okay, so I've unlocked a new card reaching 75 people and rock belief. I'm just looking at that belief per rock 40. Um, clearing rocks now produces more belief. So that uh, seems to be a good incentive to not um, destroy rocks too early. Looks like it's asking for... Ooh, it's going to take a lot of clouds. I'm not sure if I can unlock it at this point. Let's just see how much I can unlock at this point. 
And I could drop that on it as well. But that's still not enough. Jeez. So I guess buying these sticker packs does actually have its uses. Um, and the next improvement is improved housing. All abodes in radius bonus. Is this a shrine of capacity? I see. Right. And holy forest is belief per hour. Oh, we actually get a percentage per tree. So there's incentives for having these certain things. And I think the idea is to, because you're limited by stickers, you'll unlock all of these. And I don't think you'll have enough stickers to unlock everything. And you're going to have to uh, choose what you want to unlock. You can see premium ship boat capacity, five times stronger sculpting, first class explore explorers, up to mining villages. That looks like what the Astari have. Uh, settlement size 15. Auto belief collection. So all abodes in radius, so we automatically collect that. But actually looking at the game right now, I tried selecting a follower and telling him to walk all the way over to this place to start building and he just can't make it over this mountain which is going to require a lot of belief to actually sculpt a proper path through this. So this is sort of the barrier for the first time playing and right now you can see I've run out of basic land to, to uh, expand to. I mean I could try expanding the sand but it's not going to work too well. And these Astari are still laughing at me. I've, I said if you try sculpt near it, they will run away. No? I don't have enough power to sculpt that land, is it? There we go. Oh yeah, it does spook them away. And they point at you and then they run away. Which is how you kind of get them off your followers' backs. So, we're needing a lot more stickers. So I don't think this is going to happen to give me the one I need. Nope. So the next target is 95 and uh, the idea at this point I think is to uh, basically leave the game and come back later. I don't think this is meant to be played in one straight sitting. This is about as far as you can get in one, one sitting anyway. Uh, but as you can see there's a lot more to do and the game is actually a lot more complete than it used to be. But uh, just a key note on the loading screen it still does say that it's only 52% complete. So hopefully there's supposed to be a lot more gameplay elements in this, but whether you are willing to uh, uh, or if you're comfortable with the card stickers whistling while they work and the smiley faces um, is an aesthetic preference, um, but overall this is not uh, looking like a hardcore game or hardcore strategy game. If you are hoping for another populace, I don't think this is what you're looking for. Um, there. This is a cross-platform game going between the PC and mobile devices and you can see there are a lot of mobile elements in the PC version especially with the, the star rating of the mini games and the whole uh, generally waiting around. Like right now at this point I need more people going from 79 to 95 and I've just kind of run out of places to expand and I've only got 99 belief. So I could start like right now because I have less than 100 belief I can't even leash anyone to the Temple of Doom to get gems. Uh, so I could spend my current gems and get more belief and stuff like that. So it's really managing these these resources you have at your disposal. So basically I'm gonna end the video here. Hopefully this has given you a pretty comprehensive overview of basically how Goddess is progressing and how it's looking like so far. Um, there's definitely some interesting things and the end game definitely I would say is that arc, the arc right over here. Um, just as a, as a guess, I haven't actually seen what the end game is, but that's my guess. Converting the Astari people to your people and the arc. Now, the next big feature they hope to implement from what I've seen from the 22 Ken's YouTube channel is multiplayer. Or at least that's what Peter Molyneux wants to implement. And they kind of demonstrated a little bit of what multiplayer could be like in the last build, but um, Hopefully, uh, what I would wish for is that the multiplayer of Goddess feels a lot like Populous the beginning, but uh, one can only hope, really. Anyway, hope that's uh, pretty much covered it for Goddess for now. Uh, I'll, I'll come back to the game when there's another major update. And alright, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.